join me in the call to worship. Come, let us celebrate the forgiving, reconciling love of God. Know that God's love is lavished upon you forever. Come, let us celebrate and praise the God of love. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's an exciting day indeed. Um, this fourth Sunday of Lent. I would like to invite any young people forward for our children's time, please. All right. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. So glad you're here. And we've got someone who's going to join from their seat, just like all the other big kids out here as well. All right. Well, this is wonderful because I do need your help. I need someone's help here. All right. I have two words on my on papers here, and they're really similar, but there's one letter that's different. Can you read them? Lint, lint, and lent. So really close words, right? What is lint? Do you know what lint is? Anyone, anyone know what lint is? Like when you put clothes in a dryer to be dried, and then some of the um, hairs or um, uh, cl cloth um, um, stuff gets caught in the lint trap, right? And you have to clean that out every now and then, and it's kind of dirty and it's kind of messy, right? Well, lint is a very similar word to lent, right? Just one letter difference. And lent is the church season that we're in. And part of during Lent, we recognize that sometimes our lives get a little messy and a little dirty, sort of like Lent, right? So Lent gives us a time to change our lives, change the way we do things. It also gives us a chance to say, I'm sorry, right? Both to me, maybe to me, to your family, to a friend, to God and ask forgiveness so that we can clean up that messiness of our lives. Sometimes it's out, out there and sometimes it's within us. And we're going to have another baptism today. And in baptism, we use water and that washes the newly baptized clean from all of the messiness and dirt of life. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And God does that because that's what God promised to do. All right. And the great thing is one of the readings that we're going to hear about um, today uh, being read is asking God and giving thanks to God for making us clean. In our second reading from Corinthians today, Paul talks about being made clean. So anytime we want, we can pray to God 
about being made clean and forgiven. So will you pray with me? Please pray with us. <clears throat> Dear Lord, please forgive me all of my mistakes. Help me to clean up my messes. Thank you for making me new and helping me share your love. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. All right. God, you may be seated. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises, up to, raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. <clears throat> Sydney Anderson, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to be baptized into Christ? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Sydney in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Sidney Anderson and pray for him in his new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? People of God, please join us. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God?
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. In the river Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Morning over, please. Sydney Anderson, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new life, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to her eternal life. Sustain Sydney with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Sydney Anderson, you have been a child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming world to all the world. Amen. Congratulations and welcome. You may go back to your seats. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward, and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, close us with, clothe us with the garments of your grace, and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops 
of the land of Canaan that year. The word of God. A reading from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of the reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. Here he would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat 
so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Please pray with me. May the meditations of my heart and the words of my lips be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. And may you add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of this message today. Amen. Today's parable is familiar and a much-loved parable. It is one of the treasures of the Gospel of Luke. It is as joyful and full a proclamation of God's grace as you will find anywhere in the Bible. It's a story about a son who leaves home and about every son or daughter who has wandered far from his or her true home. It's a story about turning our back on love and then being turned around by the love that will not let us go. It's a story about homecoming, about creeping down the road with our heart full of shame and hope. It's a beloved story for many people. It is comforting and hopeful, except when it's not. Jesus does it again in this parable. He uncovers that which we would prefer to cover up, to turn away from, to blame on another person, or to skip right over all together. If we step back from this familiar story, we can't help be shocked at the audacity of the young brother in his request. This son is not only calculating the amount of his inheritance, this He wants it up front. He wants it right now. He says, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. This is not only greedy, but bold and cold and inconsiderate. The son can only dream about how great things must be beyond his father's property, beyond the extended family and rules of life that constrict and limit his enjoyment of the finer things in life. What he is really saying is, I don't care if you are dead or alive. I want my money and I'll be gone, he says. The offensiveness of this seems to me to cross all generations and cultures. In Jesus' time, it is really nearly incomprehensible that a son would do such a thing. And the father's response? The head of the household, the unquestioned leader of the family, the center of moral authority, what does he do? He gives it to him. When asked, the father figures up his assets and hands over the inheritance. Perhaps this is the ancient equivalent equivalent of not being able to say no as a parent. The younger son leaves home, planning never to return. He gathers all that he has and travels to another country, far from home where he doesn't have to listen to his father or work with his brother or worry about what the neighbors will say. He's free to live, and he throws himself into it. Dissolute living is how the gospel writer sums up his life. Artists often imagine a lively bar scene crowded with people, lifting cups of wine, red-faced men enjoying the attention of women in low-cut dresses as artists depict this dissolute 
living. Before long, though, the money is gone, and he's hungry and desperate, hungry enough to hire himself out to a pig farmer and to wish he had the food that the pigs are eating. So he starts to think about home. He came to himself, is how the story puts it, and he begins to turn back to the life he has left. Let's see, he says, I could stay here and starve while the pigs get fat, or I could take my chances and go home. It's a turning point in the story, and the younger son turns toward home. He goes home because he has nowhere else to go. It's the kind of bleak and begrudging home-going imagined by a poem in a poem by Robert Frost, in which it says, quote, home is the place where, when you have to go, they have to take you in. But has he had a change of heart? The turn of repentance that we have talked about here throughout Lent. Many hearers of this story think so, Some hear the same old schemer down on his luck and calculating what options he's got left. It sounds at first as if the son is coming home with a humble heart, a broken and contrite spirit. But is he really? But does it really matter? Is that ours to judge? It may be human nature to want to judge someone's motives or heart, but this parable parable reminds us that we dare not judge. To judge someone else's motives, someone else's heart, is God's territory, not ours as humans. It's natural to size up someone in a story to imagine their motives Or in our lives, it's even natural to view the one that has turned his or her back on us, abandoned us, natural as humans to look upon them with skepticism. It's natural if we are the ones smarting from the hurt and pain of rejection, abandonment, and humiliation, to be resentful that God not only welcomes their return, but sets a feast for them, and we're invited to sit next to them. This is the kind of God that we have that challenges us that, as I said at the beginning of this sermon, we might rather not really look at, right? Whether we attend or not, depends upon whether we have spent our time living joyfully or whether we have been trapped in resentment, replaying the last things our brother, our sister, our parent or child said to us. Whether we attend or not depends a lot on our ability to forgive, which thankfully doesn't depend on us but on God. Really, forgiveness and reconciliation are nothing short of a miracle. Reconciliation preserves a relationship that could have just as easily been flung aside. Reconciliation is always a good reason for celebration, and it is life-giving. The first step in reconciliation, and maybe you've got some reconciliation to go to do in your life, in your family life, in your friend life, somewhere. The first step is letting go of the past. The more we hold on to the way we think we think things should have been, the less like, likely we are to see the opportunity emerging for a brand new way forward. God is always able to offer us a new ending. 
All we have to do is recognize that the story isn't over yet and turn back to the one who loves us and everyone unconditionally. In this parable, the older son has been living at the family farm, but not really living. This brother is less than thrilled to hear that his brother has returned, and what's more, that he's been welcomed with a feast and dancing. This older son, too, has squandered his father's possessions and love. He has worked joylessly in the kingdom of God, not as a beloved inheritor of all that is his. He has been involved in his own sort of dissolute living, filled with repentance, with resentment and anger. But God doesn't fling either of these sons aside. God welcomes both of them, all of them, Even when we wander far from our heart's home, God comes running out to meet us and then throws a party for us, always. This story is known as the parable of the prodigal son, but it might well be called the parable of the prodigal father. It's a story about God's abundant grace. Grace and love are given in freedom. And we are free to turn away from it, to squander God's love. But when we come to ourselves, that same love turns us back, returns us to God, forgiven and free. And that is something to celebrate. So let the music begin Lay out the feast, pour the wine, dance to the table, and receive abundant grace. Amen.
It is a great blessing to welcome the new members into Covenant this morning. Um, Sid Anderson, whom we baptized earlier, and Amy Gilbert Anderson uh, are married and come to us enjoying things like travel and sightseeing, antiquing, museums, gardening, hunting, fishing, eat, fishing, all of great things, and we are grateful that they are with us today. Jonathan Morris is a student at UW-Madison. He is my son as well. And um, he is studying psychology, and he likes nonfiction and biking and mushrooms. <laughs> Sam Smith comes to us, um, has been worshiping for a, few, a couple of years now, when he met Retta Hansen Cook. He, they are now engaged to be married, which is very exciting. And Sam comes to us from Middleton, um, enjoying golf. I know there's some other golfers in the congregation here. Um, cooking and time with friends. We are grateful um, for you all, so um, let us um, have our welcome them into the body of Christ um, and the life and ministry of this congregation. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed to serve all people, following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Amy, Sid, Jonathan, and Sam, siblings in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? You may respond with, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? Let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Sid, Amy, Jonathan, and Sam. Welcome. All right. We continue with our prayers of intercession. Drawn close to God, to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially Russia and Ukraine. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick, especially Gregory Walters and family, Jan Pellman, or those grieving. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give you thanks for our new members, Amy, Sydney, Jonathan, and Sam, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ 
and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in service to others. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our uh, sins together in the confession and forgiveness. In the name of, of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. In the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Just a couple of announcements as we continue with our service of liturgy for Holy Communion. So uh, two announcements. I do hope that you will greet our new members um, after time and introduce yourselves and any other guests who we might have here today, either because of new members and baptism um, or just well worshiping with us for the first time. We are glad that you are here. Um, one reminder that for the Easter flowers, the orders are due tomorrow. Uh, in your bulletin, you probably received this pink insert. You can order either um, by leaving a check or cash with us today, or you can order online. Um, but please do that so that we can get our Easter lily order in um, for Easter Sunday. We're on Lent 4. We're making it through Lent. We're, we're getting there. It's almost, we're getting there. So, very good. Um... As we move into our Liturgy for Holy Communion, if you have not, if you did not pick up your uh, cup and wafer on the way in, raise your hand and one of our ushers will get that to you. Uh, but I invite you to stand now for our Liturgy of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. With your holy ones of Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you. O oh God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. If you would peel back the top layer of your communion cup to reveal your wafer, hold that up. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. Reveal, reveal, uh, peel back the second layer to reveal your juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. 
Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.